Hello everyone, welcome to Active Directory Solution Center. My name is Sai, I'm an MVP for Directory Services. My day job includes, uh, I work as a senior infrastructure consultant um, on Microsoft Infrastructure Suite of Products. Uh, and today we're going to discuss about the Active Directory sites and subnets uh, with a real use case scenario. One of the most commonly asked questions by different customers are logon performance. And as soon as as soon as you present yourself as an Active Directory consultant, they're going to ask you, "Hey, we have X amount of users and ha are facing the logon delay, per logon delay, or the performance issues, and what can we do to improve the performance?" Uh, as an as an AD consultant, there is no straight away direct answer to say, "Well, go ahead and fix this under this registry, restart, and you're gonna you're gonna have your performance better." Because this answer requires you to do a thorough analysis of the Active Directory sites and subnets uh, architecture and how they have been defined and designed, uh, along with along with the uh, uh, several different parameters adds into this. I mean, uh, those several parameters. Even before discussing it, I will start trying to uh, trying to explain you the uh, design of a site topology. What is the best practices that one have to employ while creating a site topology? So the first one would be minimize the replication time between sites like you have you might have a hub side you might have a spoke side or you might have a child side for the spoke side and you you need to you need to understand where what is the network bandwidth what is the network speed that the uh, that the primary uh, site and the uh, and the child side has in between and depending upon this you have to design your site topology the second one would be um, client affinity. So one of the one of the crucial thing is like when a client logs on, it actually uses the DNS. That's the DNS is the start start of the point like which which tries to uh, find the domain controller to nearest to its site. So there are so many situations. There are different implementations across the globe. Like we have the domain controller within the sites. We may not have the domain controller within the site, but Client does the query uh, to the remote um, sites and for the domain controller and gets authenticated. So, what's the caveat in this? The caveat is you need to understand if you have any critical business applications, uh, you need to ensure the time taken for the client uh, to to reach the domain controller and gets authenticated. Is that is that really viable? Is that is that okay for the business apps or is that okay for the production applications to be happening and also the client uh, if, if you have like a tons of logon scripts um, it's going to take for ages for you to log on so your DNS your DC your sites and subnets are the three critical components for your Active Directory sites and uh, subnet design or made be the replication design so uh, in the overall picture so we're gonna we're gonna concentrate more about the uh, more about the scenario, and and I'm going to explain you uh, what are the subsectors or subsections of the uh, uh, sites and services. So, uh, f once you have determined what location requires, the first the first activity is like try to understand the network speed. And if you think there is a T1 line between your hub site and the brand site, uh, fine. I mean you're going to validate the network performance between the client and you go ahead and say well we don't need the domain controllers in the child side because or in the spoke side because uh, we have a T1 line a dedicated line with with ample or with sufficient network bandwidth where for the clients to reach there is no need for domain controllers uh, fine I mean we have seen the implementations and uh, pretty much it works the same but in the case where you have a sort of a weak uh, network latency or network bandwidth between the hub side and the spoke side, you need to be uh, you need to carefully evaluate uh, your domain controller placements. So, 
what location requires the domain controllers and determine what you need to create how do you, how exactly you need to create the site links and the site link bridges uh, are the are, are required say so are critical so collect the network information you plan for the domain controller placement and then you create the site design once you create the site design you understand you create the site link between two sites I mean you identify the sites and create the site link and create a site link bridge um, appropriately so this would help the replication routing replication and and, and other aspects uh, so in one of the one of the use case as I said like I'm going to take one of the use case and ex start explaining different parts of the troubleshooting or what exactly how exactly you're going to view this issue so we're going to take a conceptual uh, company called XYZ and XYZ is is spread across two sides so one side is uh, the primary side is in the uh, is is away uh, is 60 miles away from the spoke side so we're going to say hub side which has which has the primary data center with four domain controllers holding all the functional roles and uh, failover capabilities and side to side capacity uh, dr active uh, uh, dr failover uh, scenarios and the design is full fully configured to support the uh, failover and uh, uh, disaster recovery and we have the spoke side or the child side which is 60 miles away from the primary center and they have they are running from some business apps which are LDAP away apps and they have like 200 clients sitting in the uh, spoke side so they don't have at this time they don't have the domain controller configured in the child side the, the client have to or the clients when they log on they use the DNS and they they point to the primary data center uh, for the uh, domain controllers and authentications and uh, uh, authorizations activities so this was running absolutely fine for some some months and because the customer were using and and the network speed between these both sites are T1 T1 lines, so customer was pretty happy. They have no issues whatsoever, unless um, they started introducing more and more logon scripts, uh, which is which is not pretty usual with the 2012. So with the 2012. Uh, we have a capability of using group policies um, processing GPPs to handle the scripts better but I'm going to park that aside and and take the real world real case scenario so they have the logon scripts they have been uh, they have been pushing onto the clients and uh, and few of the uh, few of the logon applications um, are, are more are getting more messy and messy so these these clients as soon as they uh, log on during the startup and the log on session they have tons of registry changes they have uh, they have log on scripts they have log on application services getting started so y you see ton bunch of activities happening uh, now I mean when you when they configured like a year back they were pretty happy it's like there was no m much of uh, network activity been happening but recent past they have pushed they started pushing these policies and they configured a uh, great amount of group policies so all these policies should get supply and the domain controller is 60 miles away from the uh, location so just imagine if a client logs off on the day uh, on the previous day and and logs on in the morning uh, 200 times and the, and the cl and, and there is uh, there are the these people coming across like between 9 a.m. to 9:30 a.m. or 8:30 a.m. to 9:30 a.m. you see tremendous amount of traffic getting generated and customers started feeling the feeling the heat because they don't have the local domain controller and all these requests are going on the wire and the customer hit the panic button and say well uh, we're not able to understand we troubleshot we we reduce the amount of logon scripts but even then the client started feeling the sluggishness I mean there is a sluggish activity happening so they involved uh, they involved the Active Directory consultants uh, to have a look at the uh, to have a look at the scenario and the consultants came down and and this 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 will be a huge humongous activity because there is no uh, there is no yes and no um, f 
uh, scenario for for these type of questions so all that all that the customer can do is like all that the consultants can do is like uh, start evaluating the infrastructure in the first place so the consultants ran through few of the utilities so they ran through uh, few of the a few of the monitoring utilities and and try to uh, try to look through the logs so what are the few active few few tools that you can run through in order to identify these bottlenecks Microsoft have provided an exceptional detailed logging capabilities called Windows Performance Recorder. So Windows Performance Recorder does the job for you. It's only the thing that is you need to understand how to read through the logs. So when you when as a as a consultant the first activity is to identify the DNS. So how are the DNS configured? how the DNS is being placed, what, what is the t amount of time the client takes for a, from, a, from a site to a primary site, uh, what, what is the time taken to reach the send the query and get the response. That's that's first activity which can be done using a Wireshark or the Netmon. And the second activity is uh, the, uh, the logon scripts. What, what are the startup activities? What is the startup uh, stuff happening on on the uh, on the clients and the, on the wire so is that a roaming profile which is getting pushed and if it is a roaming profile then it branches out to two different things so, I mean if they have a huge amount of my documents a uh, 1 GB getting pushed across the wire uh, that's that's a bad design so if there's a local pol local um, if it is a local profile and at the customers are able to see this uh, see the uh, performance d degradation or delay then he has to say uh, what are the group policies he has to look through the group policy activities uh, startup startup scripts um, VB scripts if any um, uh, any of the services which are taking time to load it up so the consultants should evaluate the boot uh, boot faces from the start of boot phase till the end of the uh, Explorer log, uh, I mean explore, Explorer initialization. So that's wherein you see the whole activity has been done and and progress. So after analyzing, we came to know, or, or the after analyzing these logs, the consultant recommended that it is the right time for you to implement a local domain controller because these requests which are traveling up on the wire is is predominantly is like it's it's downloading bulk of information and at the same time when 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 hundreds of clients are logging on at the same time your network pipe is insufficient in order to support these type of activities so because they have increased the amount of group policies they've increased uh, the amount of scripts and and the other aspects so they cannot get rid of it so one of the suggestion is to use the group policy preferences send it use the GPPs to push the uh, changes or make the changes to the registry uh, but it's going to be it's going to be a time taking so you don't have you customer cannot right away implement the group policy preferences because they need to go through a certain amount of testing uh, they have to test them and approve them and then implement in the production so uh, these activities going to take time so the the imminent or are the are the are the right solution for that period of time is to go ahead and install an additional domain controller and replicate with the uh, hub site because there are no there are no many different sites so customer have to uh, go with the single option so replicate from hub to spoke and spoke to hub vice versa and our customer may say is like okay how many number of domain controllers do we need that's that's like a million dollar question most customer would ask I mean uh, I have 10,000 10,000 users can I just go ahead and install one single domain controller to support them well the answer depends is uh, depends on the performance so if you have 4,000 I've seen like the best practice would goes like 4,000 clients uh, to 10,000 clients or maybe 15,000 clients if that's just an group policy or or maybe the logon activities and and there is no much much uh, much changes getting have been happening uh, no m relative pushes from applications to the uh, schema th and no no read write no m bulk of read write activities being done so that's fine I mean we can just go ahead and say run through the capacity planning I mean that's uh, that's more critical run through the performance metrics 
uh, run through the performance, check the disk, network, I/O, and then evaluate if these amount of if the thousand users or ten thousand users supports one domain controller. That's the right way of analyzing and coming into the conclusions. So, um, cutting me cutting the shot. I mean, uh, we've discussed through the Active Directory side issue and the process. I mean, what's the process involved uh, for analyzing and understanding the site issues? So, in the next next article or in the next session, sorry, you know, I'm going to I'm going to concentrate more on a different uh, use case scenarios or live scenarios, and I'm going to list out the tools. Just the one which I've said, like a WPR Windows Performance uh, Record uh, Analyzer. Uh, that's one of the uh, the gold star tool for us to analyze the log on delays and we do we do have still a lot of other tools available like u user env logging can be done uh, we can run through uh, we can run through the netmount traces understand uh, how the activities are event viewer is your best source uh, to start up if if there are any errors and events getting logged uh, site and support uh, site and subnet topology design so that should actually match your physical network so it should be based on that uh, well I hope this uh, the small snippet would help um, uh, re understanding or would help in certain scenarios where you are absolutely uh, blocked and you're not able to understand what exactly what needs to be done so run these utilities and analyze so analysis is another piece where you require uh, a, a, a a, a folks masterizing in these utilities. So if you don't doesn't don't have one, uh, reach out to the market so that you can find the consulting firms who are really good uh, with these uh, with these tools. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thank you very much.